Hi, my name is Heather and today I'm going to show you five tricks in Photoshop to help you with your children's book layout. The first trick I'm going to share with you is content aware fill. Here's an example of a page where the text is too close to the edges. And I've seen so many cases where people email me about this because they're getting errors in KDP, but they're not able to move the text on the page because the artist gave them the flattened files and they can't move anything around and they're going to charge them money to fix it for them. So here's one workaround for that. I'm going to grab everything. So I'm going to do Command A or Control A on Windows for Select All. Command T or Control T on Windows for transform. And I'm going to hold down shift and just pull this in. So that I'm adding a little bit extra on the edges. And then I'm going to press the check mark. Now I can actually just invert my selection since I have the artwork selected and I want to select the white part that's around the edges. So I'm just going to do select inverse. And now I have the white part selected. And now here's where the magic comes in. I'm going to go to edit content aware fill. And if you look over here, it's going to show you the modified version and it just filled in all those edges and you can't even tell that looks perfect. And I'm just going to click OK. And then I'll just do Command D or Control D for deselect. This looks really good. So we can merge these two layers. So I'm just going to do Command E or Control E on Windows and it merges. It doesn't always come out perfect. So if there are some parts that are kind of messed up, it's usually easiest for me to just touch them up with the clone stamp tool. So you can just press the letter S on your keyboard or find the clone stamp tool in your toolbar hold down alt and click the part that you want to copy and then go over to wherever you want to put it and then you just like color with it like a brush like this you just hold down your mouse and just color so that's how you do that and then you can just save it and you're good the next trick that I'm going to show you is Photoshop actions these have helped me so many times with repetitive tasks that I don't want to have to do over and over again. So say for example, you realize that every page of your book is actually the wrong size and you have to resize every page. Well, you could use Photoshop actions and then you don't have to do all that manually over and over again. So if I go to window actions and here are a bunch of actions and as you can see, I've done this with a lot of things with like resizing and cropping. So the way that you would do it is you're just going to create a new action. And like I could name this fix book page and press record. Now everything that you do while this is read and recording is something that you can replay on another file. So say, for example, I go to image, size, and then if I needed to resize this to, I don't know, like 8.25 or something, and click OK, I could do basically anything. I could even say I needed to change it to CMYK. I could go image mode CMYK. I could crop it if I wanted to. So if I find the crop tool right here, I could go like this and crop it. You can like adjust the levels, anything that you can do in Photoshop. Once that's done, then you just click the little stop button here. And then now you can play that on any other file. So for example, I have this file here and I could go over here and click fix book page and then I could press play and it's going to do all that stuff to it and see it just did it in like a second and you can see up here that it's now CMYK. You saw it crop really quickly so it resized it and it cropped it and it did all of this stuff and another cool thing is that when you look in here you can see all the different things it does. So if I wanted it to only do the image size and not crop it then I could uncheck that 
or I could uncheck this. I can open this up and I can even like throw these things away if later I realize I don't want it to convert the mode. I could toss that. So there's just so many things to it. And now if you want to do it to a bunch of files, here's the amazing thing. You can go to file, automate, batch. And then in here, all you're going to do here is select your action that you made. So mine was fix book page. And then source is where the files are that you're going to do stuff to. So if I have folder and then I could go in here and I could literally like choose any folder. So I could go into my illustration, mouse is great discovery. And if I were to pick this folder, if I had all my illustrations here, it would run on all of the illustrations and it'll literally run on all the files in there. So you do want to be careful in the folder that you choose. <laughs> One of the things over here, we have destination and you can either do save and close or do to a folder. And so that's why I do usually like to duplicate the folder that I have to make a new folder with a duplication of all the files, because if you don't want to lose your original files, it's always better to kind of just like duplicate it and run it on the new one. So your destination, you can, if you save and close, and it's going to literally save and close the files that you're modifying. So you're not going to get your original files back. So you could do that, or you could do a folder and you could pick if you want the new files to go in a new folder. And then you could like create a new folder here and pick that for the destination. And then you can even say how you want those new files to be named. So it can be the same document name, the date or a number or whatever you want. And the extension can be in all caps and lowercase, whatever you want. And then you would click OK and then it would run on everything in that folder. That's amazing. And this has saved me so much time in things that I have to do over and over and over again. <laughs> The next Photoshop trick that I have is guide layout. If you go to view guides, new guide, that's how you make new guides so that you have guides to show you where your bleed needs to be and where your text needs to be inside the line. So if I do new guide layout, then I can do all of the guides all at once. So over here, I can just say what I want my margin to be. So this is like where the guide is gonna be. So I could do like 0.25 and 0.25 if I want to. And then this would be the safe zone. So this would be where the text needs to be inside. You don't want the text to go outside of this. Or you could do the 0.125 and then that's the bleed. So that's where they're basically gonna trim the page off. If we put this here, then it's going to make all of them at once. And I have four columns and four rows. If I just uncheck those, then I just have those four there. And that way I know where all of my things need to be inside so they won't get cut off. It's really nice because then after I make that, when I go into another file and I do view guides, new guide layout, it's going to do the same one that I just did with the other one. So you don't have to like type in every single time what you want it to be or whatever. It's just going to come up. So that is really useful. The next trick I'm going to show you is replace color. Replace color is a way that you can change the color of something in your artwork. And this is really good one for if you convert your image from RGB to CMYK for print and it doesn't look quite like you want it to look, then you can like select all the reds and make them more saturated or change them however you want. And the other thing is just if you wanna change the color of something in your artwork. For example, I'm going to change the color of the fox. First, I just wanna duplicate my layer here so that I still have the original underneath. So I'm just going to do Command J and then that's gonna make a new layer. And then with this layer up here, I'm going to go to image, adjustments, replace color. And in here, I can grab the eyedropper tool and I can click on an object in the artwork. And so, for example, I can grab this red and then you can tell from this little window here that all the reds are selected. 
and I also need to add like the top of his head here so I'll click the plus sign ink dropper and then I can add some of these other ones and you can tell that they're selected because they're white and then the fuzziness just shows like if it's going to kind of bleed into other areas or not. I can change the hue over here so I can make him like a blue fox and then you can see that I didn't pick up some of these colors so I'll just use my little plus sign eyedropper and add those colors in and you want to make sure you get all these little bits. It might actually bleed into other areas of your artwork, but that's okay. I'll show you how to fix that. In addition to changing the hue right here, you can also change the saturation so you can make it a little more saturated or less saturated. And that really matters because if you just change the hue, sometimes it'll look a little weird. So I do like to mess around with saturation and lightness. You can also try clicking on result here and actually just changing the color here. Once you're happy with that color, then you can click OK. We want to bring these parts back to their original because we didn't really want those to change. So what we can do is create a layer mask over this one. So I'll go down here and click this little layer mask button. And now I'm just going to grab my brush tool. So I'll press B for brush and I'll make it a little bit smaller and now I can use black to hide certain parts of this colored layer so the foreground color right here is black and now I can just cover all this up and you can make your brush tool bigger also by clicking the right bracket and then the left bracket makes it smaller so that's an easy way to kind of switch between. And I'll just hide all of these. And if you go too far, then you can just press X on your keyboard to swap these colors. So now we have white and I can just show that back right there where I had accidentally hidden it. Before saving it out, we can just merge these layers together. So I can just go to layer, merge visible, and that'll merge everything into one and then you can just save it. Another really cool trick for Photoshop for your children's book is artboards. Artboards are really awesome because they allow you to see your whole book all at once and lay out all your pages together and you can see how everything looks together. I have a video on that but I can also just show you here if I do file new and say that I have my book size here, so I'm doing 9.25 by 7.25. If I click artboards, then that will make it so that I can have multiple artboards and each artboard will be a different page in the book. So I can click create and here's my first artboard. And if I click on the name of the artboard right here, artboard one, you'll see these little plus signs come and you can add more artboards. And then these will be more pages of your book. And then it's really cool because you can export right to a PDF from here and it'll put all of these pages in the PDF and it'll just all be done at once. So it makes it really easy. Check out my video on creating a layout with Photoshop artboards for a more detailed tutorial on that. I hope you liked this video. I hope it helped just to easily solve some of the issues you might come across when creating your children's book for KDP. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, or you can always email me at heather at heathercash.com. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.